Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Duck Pin Magic. I'm Mike Seller with me, Joe Ryan here. And, Joe, we've got the second annual U.S. Youth Invitational Duck Pin Championships. Uh, bowlers from all over the East Coast. Yes, we do, and we have the best right here today. You're going to see three matches, and the excitement that these kids produce is unbelievable, Mike. All right, we'll see the uh, bowlers and get to the first match coming up right after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to Duck Pin Magic. I'm Mike Sullivan with me, Joe Ryan here. It's the second annual U.S. Youth Duck Pin Invitational Championships. The Southern semifinals begin. Lori Simpson taking on Diane Hobbs. Here's Lori Simpson. First ball is right where it's supposed to be. She drops nine. Number seven pin, Mike Lori, 20 years old with a 208 high game, 495 high three games. Started bowling when she was nine. Says she looks at the spots, leaving the dots on the floor. Went by the number seven. Greatest moment in bowling. She set the world record for average last year, Mike, and that uh, tells us a little bit about why she's here today. Goes up on the match 10. Uh frame, and now we get a chance to take a look at uh, Diane Hobbs. Diane out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland. That shot. Quick nine pins. 17 years old, 175 high game, 451 high three game set. She started bowling when she was three, Mike, and there we see little nerves, I think. Uh, when the full rack's there, it's pretty easy to get the ball in the middle of the lane, and all of a sudden there's, there's one pin, and uh, those bowlers did the same thing, went by it with the second ball, picked it up with the third. She won the Duckfin Youth Invitational in 1991. And she's looking forward to going to college, becoming a dental hygienist, and bowling locally in the Baltimore Ladies Pro League. Well, she gets another chance at it because she drops nine again. Let's see if she can uh, come back and pick it up here. One thing should help, Mike, it's in the same vicinity. She had the eight pin, this time the two, and I'm betting on a spare. What do you think? All right. <laughs> Guess she picks it up. She learned from her uh, mistake the first time around. The winner of this match will uh, go on to face the winner of our next match, which uh, is the northern semifinal, if you will. Amy Bisson taking on Sue Bisson, sort of a family affair there. I don't think I'd want to be involved in that match, Mike, uh, especially as a parent. Wow. What a ball. I tell you, the, the bowlers have had no problem with the first ball. Three nines and a strike we've seen so far. Of course, they went by two of the singles. Here you see it again. See how low she gets on that uh, release? Oh. And they all go off. Lauren does have a high game of 208, high three game set of 495, so she can uh, put the numbers up as evidenced by. Uh, at 132 average, as you mentioned. She's had some good teachers. She, uh, those that have helped her, is, of course, her mom, Clara Simpson, and Jackie and Dale Dietz, and Jackie Adams. And she'd like to thank those people. That leaves the five pin. If we could all get that low, we could all bowl better, Mike. Can you imagine doing that for 10 games? If I got that low, I wouldn't get up again. <laughs> Somebody would help you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> right on target. What it does, Mike, it, it gets you down and under the ball, and it really, it locks you in position, and it keeps you from making the mistakes that we all make, going around the ball, leaning to the right, uh, leaning forward. There's, as we watch Swede Labors uh, with the men's pro tour, one of the things that is, makes his game so great is that he always has the good knee bend. So Diane counts the eight on her spare in the second, looking to pick up her second mark. Ooh. If you watch, most of the great bowlers all walk with a limp, too. <laughs> Diane has got a high game of 175, a set of 451, and she carries a 124 average. 38 and a third to 40 plus for Laurie. Tell you these young bowlers wait for a long time for this to happen, and in 10 frames, it's over. Yep, it's, uh, very quickly, yeah. Lori, of course, was involved uh, last year as a semifinalist. 
Nine box for Diane in the fourth, and so she has 47, and Lori Simpson will step back in. Open in the first, strike in the second, spare in the third. Like I tell you, a lot of time and effort and travel goes into putting this event on. The, the six games that the uh, girls and boy bowlers uh, participate in here over the next two weeks, it's... Uh, you wouldn't believe for the hour that it takes to do each show the amount of time and effort that's put into to getting to this point. Right on the money. Laurie's already a 11 year veteran of the, the uh, duck pin game. Throwing the ball with a lot of confidence, Mike, and that uh, comes from bowling in the local invitational tournaments that are put on by Frank Appelstein, where he invites the top average bowlers in the youth, National Duckpin Youth Association. And the Connecticut area also has their invitation. Wow. Through those winners put this match together. Well, Laurie has been uh, right where she's had to be through the first uh, five frames. She has taken a 21 pin lead. Only flaw is she missed a single in the first frame. It's uh, ball for ball after that has been right where she wants it. Nice and smooth. Just an example that it, it really doesn't take power. Well, Lori's got uh, the edge and experience by about three years on uh, Diane. She's also been in front of the TV cameras before. Oh, pushes through the middle. Of course, Diane made up, uh, more than made up her years because she started at age three. Two, four, seven, and nine remaining, and the hole's getting a little deeper. at the line that time that was a good shot seven box and so she'll end up with 54 after five and midway through the match now between Diane Hobbs and Laurie Simpson the middle once again that happens quite often when you're trying to catch up Mike you get a little uh Aim the ball, make sure you know you need strikes, you need breaks, spares and strikes to catch up, and you sort of aim the ball a little bit and you push it through. I tell you, Mike, doing these shows over the last, I guess, three years we've been doing them, the, I find these youth invitationals so emotional because you watch these kids and it's like a stepping stone for them. And, and they've been in this, uh, some of them have been in the youth association since nice they were shot. five and six years old. And there, it's, it's winning's one thing, but I think the thing that, that touches me is watching these kids, they're kind of saying goodbye in a lot of cases where they don't know the next time they're going to see the people from Connecticut or people from Rhode Island and vice versa. In our next show, uh, you'll be seeing the uh, boys' semifinals and finals uh, featuring uh, um, Chuck King, who was the defending champion in the boys' side event. I think he's gone as far in the youth bowling game as he go he's got to make the step up it's going to be time that's right and uh, it's it's, it's going to give Chuck a lot to think about and when when you're up there bowling you're it's difficult at that time to, to keep your mind on what you're doing because you know it's it's your last game you know it's uh, Lori with, counts six in a tough frame for her as she put the ball through the middle twice 87 64 still has a uh, healthy advantage over Diane Hobbs by uh, 23 pins. I work very closely with Frank Appelstein, of course, who runs our invitational, you know, in, in this area, and uh, Kim and Dick Bisson and some others. I don't, you start mentioning names, you leave people out, but we'll get some names from, from Frank here in a little bit and just uh, give some credit where it's due. But without the invitational in these tournaments, Mike, 
you would not keep these young men and women for the length of time we had one of the problems that we've had with the national duck and youth association is keeping the kids past the age of fourteen and fifteen and when when these kids were introduced to this tournament this head to head competitive uh, friendly tournament that was set up it, they drug their friends with them because it's like well if Chuck King's going to stay and Laurie Simpson's going to stay then I'm going to stay and it's it's just been great because when do you turn when does a young teenager 17 18 when are they ready for the adult leagues you know it's a very tough age for teenagers to get from 15 to 21 uh, so many peer pressures and, and wrong things available to them that it's, it's just great to see these these young kids uh, traveling like this and their parents traveling with them and it's just one of the things that duck pins offers it's it's quite a game Diane slides by left she had an opportunity there to uh, pick up a mark as uh, Laurie went two frames open ends up with a nine count in the frame 73 after seven still trailing by 24 in the match Nope. Now she's got him out in the middle and see if she can pick him up. She definitely needs a mark here to edge a little closer. Oh, mm. no luck. No luck. Pretty obvious that uh, Diane is a spot bowler. Watch your eyes. Right on the money that time. So a 10 count for Diane Hobbs and Laurie Simpson will step back in. I tell you, the bowlers are eligible to bowl in the NDYA, National Duckman Youth Association, as long as they're not 22 years old as of September 1st of the, the bowling season. So uh, Laurie being 20, would only be 21 uh, not, not knowing her birthday but it really wouldn't matter she would still only be maximum 21 years old so she would still be eligible next year it's a tough decision for him because you have the uh, the adults saying you know we got a place for you in our league <laughs> I'll let that spin just a bit but as you see I think the experience the experiences that Laura's have has uh, have kept her in the youth association and I I wouldn't be surprised to see her back here if she were fortunate enough to win again uh, in the Southern Invitational to to stick around another year makes it look pretty easy still 24 pins coming down the stretch now with just two frames left 107 83 Laurie Simpson over Diane Hobbs. Just Diane won't mind. She's a uh, senior at Lansdowne High. Off the side. Laurie, look, Laurie looks like she's letting that first ball try to get away from her. Uh, we saw her first five, six frames right on the money, and now the first one is uh, sort of going awry. So hard to pick out, you know. You can know what you're doing, but but making the adjustment is uh, to correct it. Yeah. Well, what happens? You start trying to correct it, Mike, and you get into the thinking process, and you might as well pack it up because uh, you just don't want to do that. You really, as as we've preached before, you need a checklist. One, two, three, and if you can just go to that checklist and correct it, uh, fine. But if you go past a couple frames searching, yeah, there's a nice ball. Kicked out the number five and a strike for Diane. We're into that ninth frame, ninth, tenth frame situation, Mike. And if you take a look at Diane at the line, there's the results. Needs another one. Almost. If she makes this a strike, Mike, it'll give her 123. And Laurie, of course, would need seven to win. Diane saying, geez, wait a minute, I'm just getting comfortable here. Maybe we can go a couple extra frames. That's full 12, right? Make up for the days that you only want to bowl eight. <laughs> well, you know what happens. You relax. You say, well, you what the think heck, it's over, and, yep. 
and you relax and the ball has a couple more turns and there's a really a rip through the middle and ended up getting eight on and a 121 not a bad game. Well the object of the tournament is to make these youth bowlers in addition to winning feel good about their game and certainly Diane's going to feel a little bit better after coming up with the two marks in the last two frames. Well, Laurie Simpson picks up six and has won the match. We'll wait for the final count. She'll go on to face our next winner in the match between Amy Bisson and Sue Bisson, which you'll be seeing momentarily here on Duckpin Magic. Five years difference in their ages, Mike. Uh you going with experience or youth? Is there such a thing as experience in youth when they're 13 and 18 years old? <laughs> We're going to see. Ten box for Laurie Simpson. She wins it 127-121. And we'll see Laurie coming up in just a little bit here on Duncan Magic. It's the Bisson match coming up next, and we'll have it for you on Duncan Magic right after this. Amy Bisson and Sue Bisson set to go at it in the uh, girls' semifinals, Northern Division. And this is a 13 year old Amy Bisson. Look at that strike. Wow. Thanks, sis. Yeah, right. <laughs> Take this. 13 years old, eighth grade. And here is uh, Sue Bisson to step in. Maybe Age of 18 years old, college freshman. Take that, huh? <laughs> this flower will end up being fun, Mike. I think we should have gotten the mom, Kim, here to uh, to do the color. Huh? <laughs> you can tell they're involved in a bowling center. It really doesn't take them long to get up and bowl, does it? Or knock down the pit. We could be done in about 12 minutes here with the whole uh, show. And this is live. This yeah. is real. There are three strikes, mm -hmm. three balls. There's four or five. Most disappointed she didn't get a strike on that, huh? I want to know who mom's rooting for. We'll Amy is an eighth grader. Don't let her young age fool you. She has got some big time numbers as far as uh, Duckpin bowling is concerned. 179 high game, 491 high three game set. Not too bad. So she'll count nine in the second frame, 28 after two. I tell you when you see her high games 179 and the high sets 491. That's a lot of bowling Mike. Uh, that tells me that you know <laughs> that had to be pretty consistent. I wonder if the high game was involved in, in the 491. 491. Yeah. Yes. Almost have to be. Well it's a little trouble with their footing on that toss. It seems to be sticking at the line just a bit on the left hand side. We're bowling in lanes five and six fair lanes middle six. Baltimore Maryland. Watch out, nine. And 37 after three. And Amy's got to maybe get a little composure after she had a tough break where she stuck a couple of times. Sue will step back in. Sue has a high game of 194, three game series of 476. And would like to be a legal secretary. Today's age, not a bad <laughs> occupation. with the, the comparison of the girls uh, and this is happening all over Mike you had Sue who is 18 started at nine years old then you had Amy who came along and she's 13 and she started at three years old so the actual bowling experiences are, are pretty equal at uh, actually Amy's been bowling for 10 years and Sue's only been bowling for nine as you can see on their uh, shirts as we get a shot from behind, they do bowl on the uh, T-Bowl Lanes uh, travel team up in Connecticut. There you see a shot. I wonder, how do you handle this as a parent? <laughs> Just hug them both, right? Hope both do well and know that one's going to be disappointed, I guess. Yeah. You hug that one a little harder, right? I think the girls have been competing long enough that, that they'll make it easy for mom to handle, you know. They'll rip through the middle. Not to mention dad. Yeah. 
Well, us dads are tough, you know, we can handle that. But don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's see if Amy can come back now. Watch out. She had a pin move. It looks like there's a couple yeah, holes a little down bit more there. Of space. The, yep. the uh, number four on the left looks like it moved a little left and a little forward. It just uh, tells us someone did a real good job with cleaning the decks up. Amy is, um, she delivers the ball very similar to what Jeff Piles does. Slightly off center and sort of cups it. Just puts the revolutions it. on it, yeah. Yeah, she's a little, I, I tell you, having only seen her bowl a couple times, a very normal thing. She's got the speed jacked up just a little bit, and it's not giving the ball time, time to, to finish. Time to work its way through. If you compare, if we could go back and compare the first frame to now, uh, it, it happens in the, the catch-up procedure, Mike, where you know. See where it's just not quite finishing. Well, she'll try to finish up here in the fifth trailing by about 21 pins in the match. Counts nine. You can, I tell you, when you're out there bowling, you can have anyone that you're bowling with try to help you, but if you really, if you just listen to the pins, they'll tell you. Well, Sue drops eight there. You see it, and Sue's ha is keeping her speed down a little better. She gets a little more turn on the ball. Talk about uh, the comparisons between the two. Amy actually uh, carries a higher average. Mm -hmm. The younger of the two sisters, 128 to 125. 128 average is a 13 year old. That's <laughs> not bad, is it, Mike? It's not bad at all as you take a look at her there. And she said one of her greatest moments in bowling is when she bowled her ninth world record. Somebody mentioned that when this was all over, you were going to bowl the winner? No way. No? You didn't say that. Somebody no, else said Somebody that. else must have said that. That's right. I, I probably match up well with, like, the junior division. <laughs> Five and six-year-olds. As long as we didn't put out the bumper bowling, I probably would the have an advantage there. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Either Watch. There's little ones. They know how much air is in each bumper on what lane, so <laughs> they have an edge on you there. The one eighty-six. The oh, sixth see frame. If Amy can jump up and uh, find that first frame magic. We started quickly. Amy jumped up, got a strike. Sue got two in the first two. A little better spot. She got nine. I tell you, she. That was, if you watch that compared to the last frames, instead of coming around that ball and trying to hook it, she really stayed under it, which tells me she knows something about her game. She kept her hand in real close, and the ball really, now that one she hooked, stay on, okay. The first ball, she really just threw it straight. She stayed way under the ball, and uh, it was effective. Let's see what, what happens here. Once you get the ball by your ankle, you can almost do anything you want to with it, but you've got to get it by your left ankle. No. Oh. Nice try as Amy tries to pick up the split. She'll be open in the seventh, but she's cut the gap a little bit. Oh, just trailing by 14. Amy held her hand out and Sue smacked it. <laughs> I think that was a signal saying, let me catch up. You know, let's make a match out of this. And Moore says, cooperate. <laughs> Sue bowling in the seventh will be open. She'll have the third ball to try to pick up some pins here. One mark Amy picked up has tightened up the match considerably, though. She's got nine here herself. Sure has. 14 pin differential. Winner here will go on to face Laurie Simpson, a 127 121 winner over Diane Hobbs, a match you've seen earlier here at Duckman Magic. There's a strike. 
obviously the, the big difference in this match was the double and nine in the first second or third frame for Sue it's a it's quite a weapon you start you pile them up in a hurry and it's really stuck Amy in the hole big ball here oh, no luck there see the determination on her face as uh, we got a great shot at the line she has terrific follow through she really does hand comes right up over the head. You watch the ball come down past her left ankle and then she whoops, Oops, slipped stuck a little bit a little. there. She's had a little bit of trouble with her footing. Sometimes it comes not from the approach, Mike, but and it could be the approach of her shoes, but you get a little quick and you're just not solid at the line. It's just see how much she's sliding. It really is kind of it looks like it keeps going where you really want to sort of plant it in solid and it's sliding out on her. Move to the ninth frame. Amy on lane five here at Fair Lane's middle six. I'll tell you one thing, if all our matches went as rapid as this, uh, we'd have no trouble fitting anything we want to say in at the end of the show. There you see the middle once again. Amy just 13. Pretty good chance she'll be back. Sister Sue is uh, 18, but she's been in this situation before. She competed last year in the uh, U.S. Duck Pit Youth Invitational. Well, and the, the start of the game sort of dictated. You had Amy step up and throw a strike. And, of course, Sue bounced right back. She got up older two frames and a double header. So it uh, really switched the pressure around. So Sue will step back in, bowling ninth frame. She's got a strike working for her in the eighth. You know, the great thing about these doing the youth shows, Mike, is this, the seats are always full. Yeah. Very similar to all sports, really. The parents and friends and supporters get in there. Look at that nice shot. Nice shot. shot. Mark in the ninth. 115 for uh, Sue Bisson in the eighth. She'll count seven more on the spare. Starting to widen the gap. 140 on her sort of closed out. Uh, the match is mathematically over. And have our contestants for match number three. Yep. Nice try. So it will be Laurie Simpson and Sue Bisson coming up for the championship. Her experience won out over youth in this particular match. And uh, I would say being a sister combination that the younger one has a little more pressure. I've seen it. that happen before. Yeah. Going out the way she came in with the strike. Just I'm sure she's uh, learned a little bit from her experience, and that's what the tournament's all about. As we'll take a look again as we follow Amy Bisson. Watch the follow through. Let's do it again. One more time. Good ball. Yeah. A little touch of class when you can get beat and still finish like this. Okay, 113. All right, 142, 113. The battle of the sisters is over, and it's on to the championship match. When we return, uh, Duck Pit Magic went after this. Championship match. Sue Bisson taking on Laurie Simpson. Sue, by virtue of her uh, 142 scored in the last game, got the opportunity to choose whether she wanted to go first or make her opponent go first. She chose to go first. And this one is for the championship on the girls' side of the second annual U.S. Youth Duck Pin Invitational. Kristen Hauser was uh, last year's champ. Kristen, because of age uh, restrictions, so couldn't come back. Next week on the, in the boys' tournament, on the boys' side, we'll see the defending champion, Chuck King, come back to defend his championship. 
You see 10 the first frame. Here on the girl side, obviously, we'll have a brand new champion, either Lori or Sue Bisson. Once again, Lori defeated Diane Hobbs in our first match today on Duck Bin Magic. 127, 121. Lori set the world record major girls division uh, average, highest average, 132. Had a 13 year old hot on her heels with 128, so I would believe that that's a record that Amy has her sights on. Yeah. Nice 10. Tell you, Mike, to set an average record is is difficult because it takes place over so anywhere between 28 to 35 weeks, and you got to you keep coming in. And, and I'm sure that you you don't need to be reminded. You know what the record is. Someone's going to tell you, and then all of a sudden uh, you're shooting at 400 every week. And well, it really, look at that nice strike. Ball. There you go, right there. But it really shows you consistency too. I mean, it's one thing you can somebody can jump up and set a three-game record or single uh, game record, but the uh, consistency, as you say, nice ball by Subis and leaves the ten pin. But that consistency over a whole year's period of time, whatever the bowling season is, plus tournaments and everything else, really is a testament to the uh, skill of the bowler. Well, it really does because you know in your everyday life you have so many things that come up that that really do travel to the bowling center with you whether it be I mean at these uh, young people's age they got schoolwork and uh, the whole works that they have to keep their mind on and they're trying to knock down pins at the same time so yep, she's going to count seven and be happy about that too gives her an opportunity to uh, pick up a spare here in the third. Sue has to guard against the habit that I can talk on forever, and that's uh, getting that arm out a little bit. Uh, you not only lose control when the elbow flies around the side of the ball, but you, you lose the effectiveness of the ball. It's just not a very power, powerful ball when you do it. You need the, the tight turn. Now, she can turn the ball, but again, you've got to get it past your left ankle with that arm in next to your side. And, once the elbow gets outside the wrist, it's a, it's a hard game, Mike. And 30. you become pretty good at it, I mean, at doing that. So you can be accurate, and it looks like you're just uh, having tough luck, and it's really not tough luck. If you listen to the pins, and of course you can feel it, it's just sometimes you can't make the adjustment. Well, Laurie pushes through the middle on the strength that she's uh, posted in the second frame. The big ball here. Wants to count some pins. She does. Get one more, maybe? Nope. Got it all even. 27 after two frames. Of course, Sue with 36 in the third. Laurie hits a couple of them, and we'll have 36 apiece. are tied 36 after three frames so that's how a championship match is supposed to be that's right of course the youth invitational championships taking place at the same time as a men's pro tour event both occupying the house here at Fairlanes Middlesex quite a lot of activity for bowling fans of all ages pretty ball strike and Sue Bisson Lori Simpson puts her second strike on the board of the match. Come up. Two, four, seven remaining. Sue tries to answer Laurie's strike. Here's, and here's where every time you step up in the head-to-head -head matches, you have the chance to switch the pressure because you bowl, as you see, you bowl two frames. Get inside, okay. So both bowlers still even. Of course, Laurie with the opportunity to throw a double, having a strike in the fourth frame, and Sue with a spare. And here we go. She doesn't give you time to talk about it. Okay, she got away. That might be a strike, Mike. Hits it from behind. May take out the head pin. Not a bad break. One, two, and uh, 
She's got away with a couple of them this game. She's just, she's getting a little quick. And if you watch, let's see if that hand comes by her ankle. She did. And she picked it. Yep. Tough luck. Tough break. Looks like each pin is going to be pretty important in this match. So I would say she's going to try for this as hard as she did for the spare. And she gets 10. Laurie Simpson steps in. She's got the uh, spare in the fourth, spare in the second, open in the first and third. Uh, strike, rather. Those are strikes, right? Those are two lines mean strike, right? Those are strikes. <laughs> X marks. Oh, my. Did Same that, thing uh, as the last time. One five. That's. Once again, you really have to get yourself back together before you throw this ball. And because you obviously it's a little upsetting. And there, once again, Seven, not a bad count when you consider you what you're looking at after you knock the one five out. Really likes the uh, fifth, uh, lane five, not lane six. There's a nice test. Nice ten, a lot. I tell you, she's worked hard. 63 to 64, she's down one, and both of the strikes were sort of uh, disastrous as she did take out the one five, but worked it out. She's left only one pin on the lane. Uh, same as Sue. Both bowlers have only left one stick. Does like lane five, no question Pretty about ball. that. She's got this two strikes and now a nine drop, which could have been a strike. Let's see if she can pick up the seven pin. I tell you, Mike, if you really watch, uh, sometimes a right-handed bowler on the right-hand lane will sort of unconsciously drift from the rack. You really don't realize it, but it's there. And if you drift from it a board or so, it's, it's going to change your line. Pretty ball. Nice ball there. Ten pin didn't go down. Girls have sort of played right along. Yeah, it's been uh, right up there back and forth throughout the match. It's a tight one as we hit the uh, midway point. Yeah. Yeah. Good execution there, Mike. When you throw the little hook, as obviously Sue does, uh, when you start reaching for the ten pin under the pressure of the competition and the camera, and there she goes again. <laughs> Still a one pin match. I she thought she had that one. Well, there again, it's it's the little bit of a late finish. And uh, with these lane conditions, you really have to keep the speed of your ball proper. If you get a little fast, the splits are going to jump up. Once again, though, an eight count and nine out. 91, 73 plus for Laurie. Let's see what Laurie Simpson can do as she steps in. Neither bowler is marked consecutively. It's been the, the second, fourth, and sixth frames for both bowlers as Laurie bowls frame seven. Could change that here and take an advantage of the match. This is the one five lane for her. Oh, nice kick there, nine on, number five pin standing. Well, that ties the match. Of course, she still has an opportunity to pick up the uh, spare break here. Nope, didn't get through it. No. Nope. Hmm. Big pin. Kept it tied, Mike. We get a <laughs> Can't get any closer than this through uh, <coughs> first seven frames, and we go down to the last three frames, eight, nine, and ten, all tied up. Looking for a winner. Girl side of the uh, U.S. Youth Duck Pin Invitational. She's got a big help there as the uh, five pin got kicked out late. Let's see if she can clear her mind of what happened the previous frame as she went by the five pin twice. Of course, the six and ten, she's going to have to execute. This for a right-handed bowler, you've got to stay down, which she does well, and get through the ball. Okay. Well, Laurie is open in uh, one frame, picked up a mark in her second frame, and now Sue Bisson will step in. Nice ball. Ooh, tickled the five pin. Wiggle. 
It was nine and about a quarter, I think, on that uh, shot. You know, it's odd if you, Laurie has four marks on lane five, and Sue is shooting for her fourth mark on lane six. Lift it out there. Look out. <laughs> Maybe when she tickled it with the first ball, it moved over just far enough, Mike. Good match, well, regardless of the outcome. Yeah. It's a good match. Still running neck and neck here as uh, Sue Bissett will operate on lane five. Oh, they both oh, hit it at the that. same time. Yeah. Now look Watch at this. Out. Oh, it took out the back one. This, uh, fortunately, there, there are no pins lying on the deck. Okay, it picked it up anyway. I thought it may have moved far enough. Uh, the machine wouldn't pick it up, but the number two pin for a spare and the first shot at consecutive marks. He's got it. Hey, it's a tough spare to hit, Mike, when you feel like you've been not really cheated because yep. she had good pin action, but when a pin wiggles and then you have to shoot it, it's uh, you got to close things out. And sure. Saw a quick shot of mom and dad up in the stands there. Good ball. Watching Sue. And how about Lori coming right back? Still time, Mike. Boy, you hate to see that happen. Bowling as rapidly as they're bowling. What, what Laurie's doing is waiting for a ball. Um, again, a lesson. If you're bowling head-to-head -head and, and the girls are reminded of the amount of time, all the bowlers are, that we have to get these shows in and the game's in. And she's through her first ball without having her other ball back. And then uh, under this pressure, you really don't need to be standing there waiting to shoot this shot. Let's see what happens. She appears to be collecting herself pretty well. Yep. Move to the right corner of the lane. Nope, didn't get down yeah. and out. Didn't stay down on it. So uh, she'll be open. In She's going to bowl the frame. She has an opportunity, Mike, even though she went by the single there in lane six of the previous frame, she went by the five pin. So. But she's, the game's tied, so whatever Laurie does, Sue's going to have to do. Sue, of course, is on a mark, but if Laurie marks in the tenth, it, it makes the folks as good as the people again. She's on her favorite, well, it was her favorite lane. That's, That's a tough one. Couldn't have been worse. Five, six, seven, nine, and ten. And very little possibility of making that shot or even getting ten out of it is uh, a tough way to finish. Picks up 8 1 28. So Sue needs. Well, actually, uh, she's in very good shape at this point because she's 120 plus this ball here. Stay behind the line and keep it in play. And there you have a winner. Going out in style. And as she finally breaks into a smile there as uh, she realizes what happened. Crowd is giving her big hand. But I saw a little jerk in her throat there. <laughs> she had that big swallow and said, Phew. The game took a long time, Mike, you know, and, and I don't mean time-wise, but you just, no one got away and nothing really happened until the ninth frame. Yeah. So she's got the mark in the tenth, and she will uh, have one more ball to finish up here, but Sue Bisson, our champion, on the girls' side for the second annual U.S. Youth Duckpin Invitational Championships here at Fairlane's Middlesex. It is a final a fine game. 148-128. Sue Bisson's our winner. We'll come back to wrap things up after this. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Fairlane's Middlesex, Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Mike Sella with me, Joe Ryanier, and our champion on the girls' side of the Youth Duckpin Invitational Championships, Sue Bisson. Congratulations, Sue. Thank you. You had a great uh, couple of matches. 145 average, Joe. Yes, you had two games, 148-142, and... Uh, I want to know, I'm going to ask her anyway, and she asked me not to, how are you going to handle going home with your sister? I don't know. <laughs> You're going to let her handle it. Yep. <laughs> okay, Sue, thanks a lot. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, for Joe Ryan Air and Sue Bisson, I'm Mike Sullivan. Thanks for joining Duckbin Magic. We'll see you again next time.